Up these stairs is the third floor of the antique mall. This floor is full of vintage and antique furniture. I hope you'll join me for this incredible tour. Tucked away in this small historic town of Columbus, Wisconsin is a hidden gem, an old canning factory from the early 1900s. It was converted into an antique mall in 1983 and is now the largest antique mall in Wisconsin. With over 75,000 square feet of antiques displayed and sold by over 200 of Wisconsin's finest dealers, this is a great place to find collectibles, antiques, glassware, books, and vintage decor. I've been lost in this antique mall on several different occasions, so today I decided to grab a map. The first and second floors are full of vintage and antique collectibles. I'll get to those later, but today I decided to start with the third level, which is four large sections of vintage and antique furniture. In order to make this video more interesting, and if money wasn't a factor, then let me know in the comments two items that you saw in this video that you would have purchased on this day in this store. If you're new to the channel, my name is Barry and welcome to Mad City Modern. I created this channel to show mostly vintage and antique furniture restorations and refinishing. I recently started a new penny challenge series on the channel where I'll take one penny and try and buy and sell furniture all the way to $50,000. I do my best to upload restoration content weekly, but this week I'm taking a break since I'm celebrating several milestones both on the channel and in my own life. This would be my idea of fun, so I'm not looking for anything specific today, but I thought you might enjoy joining me on this journey. The more time that I spent in here on this day, the more I started thinking about so many of you who may not have the opportunity to see a place like this. Whether it's a physical disability that doesn't allow you to get out of the house, or perhaps you live in a country where stores like this aren't available. So as I'm searching through many of these items, most of the furniture items are between $100 and $200. Since this is an antique mall and most of these vendors are resellers, these prices actually aren't too bad. But if I'm looking to buy and sell furniture for a profit, this wouldn't be the best place to look. But if you're looking to sell smaller vintage and antique collectibles online, then this is an excellent place to look, as you'll see later in the video. Although I always enjoy seeing vintage and antique trunks, as well as the vintage and antique cedar chests, the market has been flooded with these items in the last several years, so there isn't much to consider regarding the resale value. The same goes for these vintage and antique hutches. People would rather find them in rough condition, giving them a reason to paint them. With over 75,000 square feet of space, it's not possible to show all of the prices or all of the items in this mall. However, I'll do the best I can to point out some of the furniture items that caught my attention. Here's a mid-century planter for $495. Here's a Danish end table for $195 and a vintage mid-century turntable cabinet for $499. Items like these show up in our thrift stores often. For me, visiting an antique mall like this is a thrill in itself. It's outside of the norm for me. I compare this experience to visiting a classic car show. It's a place you go that's enjoyable, and when you do go, you expect to see classic cars. So seeing hundreds of the same thing all in one place can be overwhelming. At some point, they all start looking the same. So in one sense, it's more of a thrill to come across one piece of antique furniture in the thrift store, or out in the wild, if you will.
Most of the furniture in this first section isn't quite my style, but it's someone's style. And what I've learned on the channel in the last year and a half is that so many of us have different preferences when it comes to furniture styles. This piece, for example, may eventually be the perfect find for someone. In this next section, I spotted more Art Deco furniture, and at the moment, this is my favorite style to look for, whether it's in the thrift stores or on Facebook Marketplace. Even the prices here in the antique mall weren't really that bad. I've been looking for an Art Deco style radio like this one for a while now. Occasionally they'll show up on Facebook Marketplace in this area for between $100 and $200, so I'm going to keep looking. This is a popular style of vintage furniture that has sold well for me in the past. These chairs were priced right at $28 a piece. Unfortunately, there were only two, and I usually try and pair these with a dining table from the same era. This vendor has an incredible selection of mid-century lamps, and although I'm not in the market for more lamps at the moment, it's always fun to admire the different styles. Vintage lawn chairs have been trendy for a while now, so I look forward to finding a matching pair that needs restoration or refinishing. However, this is the worst time of year if you're looking to resell lawn chairs. I didn't expect to find any Lane Acclaim furniture in this antique mall, so this was a surprise. $235 is a fair price. I've restored and refinished a few Lane Acclaim pieces on the channel, and I have to say this end table is one of my favorite styles. I regret that I walked right by this atomic style stand. In fact, I think that I moved it just to get to this old axe that I didn't even purchase. I considered purchasing these four chrome chairs with vinyl seats. It was a total of $75, but I was afraid I wasn't going to be able to find a matching table. In some situations, I'll take the risk and hang on to them until I can find a matching table, but winter is approaching and I don't have room for excess inventory.
Since this was my first time in the furniture section of this antique mall, it took about two hours in total to make my way through just the third level, so I'll pick up the pace just a little. I visited this antique mall about a half a dozen times, but until recently I didn't realize this entire third level was all antique and vintage furniture, so this is all new to me. The last time I was here, it was a Sunday afternoon and the parking lot was full, so this time I decided to arrive at 9am on a weekday. This time, I was one of only a few shoppers in the entire mall. Here are a few great examples of an Art Deco waterfall dresser and matching desk. Unfortunately, these items were sold, but if you've been watching the channel for a while, then you know that I've had the opportunity to restore and refinish a few items similar to these. I strongly considered purchasing this Art Deco style wardrobe. The price was $130 and I thought that was great. However, for the channel, this didn't need a major restoration and regarding resale, in my area, I don't think there was enough margin for profit. Profit margins obviously play a significant role when running any small business. On this day, I just enjoyed admiring the different styles of furniture. These lawyer bookcases or barrister bookcases are very popular at the moment and they can bring a significant asking price. If you've watched the channel then you may have seen the metal bookcases that I have in the shop very similar to these ones.
This is another Art Deco style dresser or chest of drawers. I especially like the drawer pulls on this one, and I had never heard of Schuster's out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I didn't think $150 was a bad asking price at all. Unfortunately, I have three of these in the shop at the moment, waiting to be refinished. There's one more major furniture section to see, then I'll move on to the smaller collectibles on the first and second levels. This is one of the best examples of a Hoosier cabinet that I have seen. The first designs originated in the 1920s and 1930s and were mass produced starting in Indiana. These would become a staple furniture piece in kitchens across America for decades to follow. In 1877, Joshua Hall, an icebox maker from New England, and his three sons moved to Belding, Michigan, and started the Belding Hall Company. Belding Hall became one of the largest refrigerator factories in the U.S. Like many furniture manufacturers over the years, Hall moved his company to Michigan because of the large supply of hardwood. In fact, at one time, Grand Rapids, Michigan was referred to as the furniture capital of the world. Victrola, one of the leading turntable manufacturers, was born in 1906 in Camden, New Jersey, when first introduced to the American public by the Victor Talking Machine Company. Victor would later become RCA and was the largest and most successful turntable manufacturer of its time.
On this day, I was mostly just admiring the variety of furniture, but I did make one purchase, and that's for the Mad City Restoration channel. This $28 purchase should be available on the channel in the following weeks. Now it's time to make my way down to the first level, to start from the beginning to search through all of the smaller vintage and antique collectibles. It was here where I found a variety of incredible collectibles, and I decided to make that part two of this antique mall tour. If you've enjoyed this content and you feel that I've earned your subscription to the channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button and showing support for the channel. I believe I have enough footage to upload three or four more videos for this antique mall tour, but it requires a lot of time and effort to create videos like this, so it's important for me to know that you support this type of content. I'll see you soon for part two of this tour.